You know, of course, there's a lot of people out there and, you know, they say, well, let's heal trauma. All right. How do you heal trauma? First of all, trauma is not sick. Trauma is not sick. Trauma is a process in which you do within you. And you're not broken. You know, one of the guys said it's an internal psychological wound. That's not true. It's an internal psychological education. It's education on how to survive in the world. It's a strong neural pathway, right? When you talked about yeah. Yeah. what we practice becomes a more, mm -hmm. you know, a more mm -hmm. well-traveled path. So, so, the, so the biggest error that, that we see, that I see in the world who wants to help trauma or try to, is seeing that the trauma is an illness. Seeing that trauma is a wound you'll never heal. I would not go to those guys. Because right. their belief system will hinder your ability to heal. Totally. You'll be you'll you'll still be seeing them 20 years from now. You're you're not broken. In my world, you're not broken. You're you're successfully manifesting something you said you don't like, and you might not even notice what you're doing to create it. Right. You, you may not notice that you're having a movie theater of what happened. You don't may not even notice that when you wake up, you imagine it happening and hoping it doesn't happen, but you're also rehearsing and replaying it. And so to end the emotional insanity is learn neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity. My way is a fast way to create a life change. You know, I, we've got we got a few, you know, we got our videos on YouTube. We got like what 1500 over 15 million video views. Look at the testimonials of people who are really, really, really sick physical illnesses, ailments, and back pain, all kinds of stuff. Really, really sick. And they're not sick anymore. As a matter of fact, 10 years later, they're still not sick. Because the brain is a manifester of health, and it's a manifester of death and illness. But if you step inside of it and make the adjustments, the adjustments will be profoundly big in a good way. Right. It was interesting. I was talking to a psychologist and she was talking about how she hates trauma. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I love trauma. Like, it's weird. I don't love that someone went through something, but that's the. It's that's exciting the, that you can change you can it. Find that piece, the trauma that's causing this problem. Mm -hmm. That's the gold, right? Like, you're like, wow, this is what, this is all we have to do. And yeah. so it's a whole different mindset. When she said that, you know, it kind of just caught me off guard because I'm like, how could you hate trauma? Like this is the. <laughs> but, but see again, you remember you have, have a, different, a whole different you have mindset. A, you have a different education. She does because with her system, you can't do nothing with trauma. Right, and I just but, forgot that five years ago I hated trauma too, or ten, six years ago, seven. Yeah, we have it before you started. It's scary, yeah. right? It's scary to not know. There's nothing we can do about it. It's hopeless. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. happened, so you're forever like this, and um. Yeah, that was a big insight. I was like, wow, how different. Yeah, well, like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's because your education is a lot different than their education. Because, and that's that makes the big difference, you know. So uh, knowledge is power. You know, of course, there's people watching this call, watching this interview. And um, one of the things I noticed that if you had some bad stuff happen to you, that's the worst place you want to go. You know, you don't want to go there. You're afraid of it. You you know, like how many times I've heard this story. I, I went to a therapist to talk about my problems. When I left, I'm ready to kill myself. You know, you don't see that in our sessions. When they leave, they say, oh, my God, I'm so glad it's off. It's gone. I have peace. I have hope. A psychologist I'm working with 20 years, I've had no hope, miserable and depressed, and it's gone now. I have faith that things can change. Mm -hmm. So, again, uh, the model of thinking is important. And what I said, and what I teach in training, I said, it doesn't matter which modality you do, every modality has a belief system. And that belief system will dictate whether you heal fast, slow, or if ever. And again, when you look at, you got to look at their belief system, you know, you go to a medical doctor and their two skills is cut it up or drug it up. Right. So that means if there's anything else, any variance of that, you know, the kid who went to the doctor and he says, well, there's nothing wrong with him. You know, there's nothing to drug. And of course, he's on antidepressants. That's really going to fix it. So again, so again, uh, now if you're, you know, you know, a psychologist or psychology says, well, we know it's a memory and we're going to dig around your childhood. And once we understand why this happened, you should feel better. 
And of course, the lady who's crying on my couch, and for 20 years, she's been in therapy. She said, I spent so much money, I could have two homes for the much of my money I spent in therapy. But why am I still so miserable? I understand why my dad, what he did, my ex-husband, what he did, but I still don't feel any better. And I said, the reason is the cause of your problems is because you have memories holding and playing within yourself. Just because you logically understand something doesn't mean it goes away. You just have to have good proof to keep the problem. Right. And the difference between changing and understanding um, is that the dad is smiling at the end and the child is smiling. So the difference really is this idea that things are so different that you respond differently because you're no longer that person limited by that experience. Yeah, you've updated your internal references. Yeah. You respond differently. So if so, here's the deal. If, if my dad abused me and I understand why he did it and he's trying to save me and make me a good kid and all these things, I can understand that, but I don't feel it hasn't changed the reference from what I'm going to respond <clears throat> when <throat> sad things, bad things happen to me. I'm going to go straight back to, I am bad. I have proof. Dad thanked me and he's yeah. this and that. So, but if all of a sudden through my memory change, dad is now laughing and, and flying a kite with me mm -hmm. or taking me to the beach and swimming with dolphins with me. Now I'm a different, I, I operate from a different feeling and the feeling is going to dictate the action. Right. Yeah. Let, me, let me explain what she's talking about in a simple term. <laughs> <laughs> Even more simple than that, guys, you have to understand if you understand the principles of the mind, first of all, everything inside your brain is you. So if you have a memory of dad punching you in the face, that's you punching you in the face. Even though dad may have done it 50 years ago, he's not punching you in the face. So when you go and update your memory inside of you, you don't change dad, you don't change what happened, but you're only changing what your brain will recycle on you. Mm -hmm. So if you go and you adjust your memory about dad being nice and kind, guess what your brain will do to you? You'll be nice and kind. To everyone. Now, yeah. A natural and, byproduct. Yeah. And and it's it's an un, it's a pro if you understand that your brain is like a computer, you know, if you put a program in, it's going to work. If you put an angry program, it'll be angry. If you put a loving program in there, it'll be loving. If you take an angry program and change it into loving, you'll be loving. If you take a positive experience and you make it a bad experience, you'll be feeling bad. It's that simple. To the brain, whatever is in there is not bad. It is not good. It's just a program. And your brain recycles. It's the first recycling system in the world. It recycles your experience and it re-gives you whatever you hold. So mm -hmm. if you don't like being miserable, change the miserable experiences to positive experiences well, and, your brain, and your brain will start doing it. Now, guys, you can, you can sit there and watch a TV show and feel happy or sad, mm -hmm. but yet that's just a fake experience on a TV screen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so your brain doesn't know if it's bad or good, if it's real or true or not true. No. It's just a TV show. Yeah. And I think that's interesting because I think a lot of people believe emotions are like air or something like, um, you know, mm. only God can change emotions or something, but they're literally a physical sensation in your body. It's a physical sensation. So it, it depends. There's, there's five types of memory. Some of them are physical. Right. Some of them are not physical. Some of them are in, uh, visual or auditory. Um, right. But when you feel an emotion like fear. Oh yeah. When you're, yeah. Yeah. Anger it's, or that's yeah. a physical sensation yeah. it's not just a like something you can't do anything about right physical. well you if you don't know how you can't right if you do know how you can yeah. and this is where the emotional education we all need it's a, it's a spiritual evolution or an emotional evolution of the self know thyself is not not your name on your driver's license or birth certificate know thyself is know what you do within yourself to yourself by yourself and how to change it for yourself because yeah. some people need different things to change things. Yeah, there's many, many combinations. Right.